Okay, so now that we know what a unit imaginary number is, let's see how we can deal with numbers that are not unit imaginary numbers. Okay, so we, we know that a unit imaginary number is simply the letter i which is equals to the square root of negative 1. But how about numbers that are not unit imaginary such as the square root of a number like negative 25? How do we deal with such a number? So oh, I'm going to illustrate how we can solve this one. So we can say uh, 25 times negative 1 okay so we know that uh, when we multiply negative 1 times 25 we're simply just going to get the negative 25 back again and uh, there's another property of um, exponentials or yeah of uh, a property of exponents which says um, if the square uh, if we have a situation like the square root of a times b we can simply say uh, the square root of a times the square root of b so we're going to use the same property of, of, of uh, exponents on this uh, on this question right here. So we're going to say the square root of 25 times the square root of negative, 20, uh, negative 1. So we know that the square root of 25 is simply 5 times uh, the square root of negative 1. But we know what the square root of negative 1 is. So the square root of negative 1 is simply just i. So we have 5 times i. Okay, so 5 times i is simply just 5i. Okay, and that's our final answer. So this what we have right near here is what we call an imaginary number. This is what we call an imaginary number. We know that i is a unit imaginary number because it's just one. But this right here is an imaginary number. So it's more than one. So it's just an imaginary number. Okay, so now we can just look at uh, what exactly imaginary numbers are a little bit in depth just by definition, okay? So we can say numbers of the form bi where b is a real number are called imaginary numbers, all right? So looking at our previous example where we had 5i, we can replace the 5 with the b here and say numbers of the form 5i where b is a real number are called imaginary numbers, all right? So that's just what imaginary numbers are. And now that we know what imaginary numbers are and also what a unit imaginary number is we can now look at uh, what complex numbers are okay so uh, by definition a complex number is a number of the form a plus b i okay where a and b are real numbers so a complex number is simply a number of the form a plus b i where a and b are real numbers okay so a and b are real numbers the i there is not a real number it's just an imaginary number or a unit imaginary number all right so um it, when we look at a complex number here it's got two parts it's got this part here where we have a and we have this other part here where we where we have b i so looking at this part we can say a is called the real part of the complex number so the reason why we say a, a is a real part is because it's a real number it's a real number and it, it, it is not imaginary so um, a is called the real part of the complex number and B is called the imaginary part because it's multiplying with a unit imaginary number which makes it an imaginary number of the form bi so um, this part is called the real part of the complex number and this part is called uh, the imaginary part of the complex number all right so right here we have an example that will just help us understand complex numbers a little bit further so we can say the example says let z be a complex number such that its real part is negative 10 and its imaginary part is 3 write down the complex number z okay so um the question here says the real part of the complex number is negative 10 so we can say z is equals to the real part is negative 10 right then um, its imaginary part is 3. Its imaginary part is 3, and that's positive 3. So we, we're going to say plus 3i. So this is our complex number. We've written down a complex number. So and remember, by definition, a complex number is any number that, that is in the form a plus bi. So and this is simply a plus bi. So that's just one and the same thing. So we've um, we, we, we've answered this question. So we have another example down here, which says when can a complex number like a plus uh, like a plus bi and c plus di be said to be equal? 
Okay, so when can a complex number like a plus bi and c plus di be said to be equal? So when we look at our solution here, our solution says they can only be equal when the real parts of both complex numbers are equal and when the imaginary part of the complex number numbers are equal. So they can only be equal when the real parts of, uh, of both complex numbers are equal and when the imaginary part of both complex numbers are equal. So what this simply means is that this can only be equal to this when the, the real parts of both complex numbers, which is A and C, are equal. And when uh, the imaginary parts, which are B and D of both complex numbers, are equal. So this is the only time we can say both complex numbers are equal, when the real parts are equal as well as the imaginary parts are equal. So we've answered this question, and I thus that we've come to the end of this, uh, of part two of complex numbers. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at the Agan diagram as well as uh, the conjugate and uh, many other things that are going to come in. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in and see you guys in the next video.